Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the phasor representation of sinusoidal varying alternating quantities. This phasor representation is the more convenient form. We can easily analyze the quantities rather than equation and waveform. In order to solve the complex problem, this phasor diagram is very important. We can easily understand the alternating quantities by using the phasor diagram. Now we will see the phasor diagram. So this is a sine wave, sinusoidal sine wave. We will take an as a voltage. The sine wave is nothing but the initially at point 0, at the angle 0, it is 0. Then keep on increases and reaches the maximum value at 90 degree. Again it keep on decreases, reaches the 0 at 180 degree. Again increases in negative direction and reaches the maximum value at 270 degree. Then decreases in negative direction and reaches the zero value at 360 degree so it's keep on changing alternating so that can be represented as a circle so this is the point zero right so initially it is zero then keep on increasing then keep on decreasing so this is nothing but equivalent to the positive of cycle again it is increasing in reverse direction increasing in the opposite direction then decreasing so this can be treated as a negative of cycle so here the alternating waveform that can be represented as a phase diagram we can easily understand that is it is keep on rotating the way the voltage is keep on rotating increasing decreasing again increasing decreasing in positive direction as well as negative direction right so here we have the point 0 0 to p so that is equivalent this line is drawn equivalent line is drawn that intersect at this point so this is the point nothing but the point p so this angle is phi the same angle this angle also phi both are equal right so here when the voltage increases the angle also increases here also angle also increases so this angle can be easily measured from the phasor diagram itself right so the entire sine wave can be represented as a phasor diagram for easy understanding purpose. So this EM is nothing but the maximum value of the alternating quantity. This EM is the maximum value of alternating quantity. Right. So in order to satisfy this phasor diagram, there are some conditions available. Any alternating quantity, either voltage or current, can be represented by rotating phasor. Rotating phasor, phasor is nothing but this die. This is a rotating phasor. Either voltage or current can be represented as a rotating phasor for satisfying the following condition. The, the following condition should be satisfied. Then only the sinusoidal quantity, either current or voltage, can be represented by the rotating phasor. What is the first condition? The magnitude of rotating phasor should be equal to the maximum value of the quantity. So the magnitude of rotating phasor should be equal to the maximum that is that is available. So this is the maximum value. So this is also maximum value. So both are equal. So we can represent this as a rotating phasor. The sine wave can be represented as a rotating phasor because the maximum magnitudes are equal. The second point. The rotating phasor should start initially at zero and then move in anti-clockwise direction. So here also we are moving in the anti-clockwise direction. The second condition also satisfied. So we are moving in a anti-clockwise direction like this. Starts at zero, we are moving in anti-clockwise direction. Then third one, third condition. The speed of rotating phasor should be in such a way that during its revolution, the alternating quantity completes one cycle. Right? While moving in the moving the rotating phasor, while moving on full rotation, it the alternating quantity should complete one cycle. So that is also is available. That is also satisfied. See this. You know, while completing this one circle, one rotating phasor, here one complete cycle is completed. A positive and negative off cycle is completed. Right? So, the entire cycle can be represented as a one rotating phasor. So, third condition also satisfied. Now, we will go to the in phase, out of phase, the phase angle between the two quantities. Now, we will see the 
in phase and out of phase relations so the phase is nothing but the fraction of time period that elapsed from reference or zero position that is there the phase is nothing but here elapsed from the reference how it is deviated from one quantity how is another quantity is deviated is nothing but a phase in that the first type is in phase what is in phase two alternating quantities are said to be in phase if they reach their zero value and maximum value at the same time if two alternating quantities are there both are starts at the same time and ends at the same time that is the zero value as well as maximum value is the same time in that is treated as a in phase the starts and end at the same time right so that is represented in this waveform now consider the two waveform i1 equal to imm im1 sin theta i2 equal to im2 sin theta what is this so this is represented in a waveform this is i1 this is a waveform i1 the sine wave it starts at 0 degree this i2 only the amplitude is maximum amplitude is more that also starts at 0 degree and ends at the maximum value and reaches the maximum value also same time there is no phase difference both waves are starts at 0 degree itself both reaches the maximum at the same time again reaches the zero value same time again reaches the maximum same time again reaches the zero value same time so this is called a in phase there is no phase angle between these two waveform that also analyzed from the equation see this sin theta here also sin theta there is no more additional angle available it means that these both are in the in phase right so this is the maximum value of first waveform the maximum value of second waveform so that is represented in the vector diagram this i1 and i2 see both are available in the same line there is no deviation i1 and i2 are available in the same line right so from this waveform we can analyze that from the above waveform it is clear both i1 and i2 reaches the zero and their maximum value at the same time even though they have different maximum value the maximum values are different but the zero and maximum values are reaches at the same time right so it is also referred as both current are in phase meaning that no phase difference between two quantities it also represented by the vector diagram right there is no phase angle between these two quantities right so that is also it is represented by this vector diagram now we'll go to the out of phase the second type what is out of phase two alternating quantities are said to be out of phase if they do not reach their zero and maximum value at the same time maximum value and zero values are not reached at the same time the phase difference between these two quantities are represented in two different form one is lag or lead right in previous case both zero value and maximum value reaches at the same time here it's so not at the same time it may be lead or lag it may be the the angle will be the leading or angle will be lagging so based on the two types available first we will see the lagging what is mean by lag the lagging alternative quantities in is one which reaches its maximum value and zero value later than that of other alternating quantity later so the lagging means one alternating quantity is lagging with the another quantity the second quantity will reach the zero value before after that the first quantity will reach the maximum value after some time only the second quantity will reach the maximum or zero value so there is a later so it will reach the maximum or zero value later so that it is called a lagging so that is represented by minus pi i2 equal to im2 sin omega t so that starts at zero degree like previous case but i1 equal to im1 sin omega t minus pi right so the minus refers lagging right the pi angle this pi angle is lagging between i1 and i2 i1 reach the maximum value delaying with an angle of pi right so that is represented in the waveform 
see this this, this is i2 the i2 starts at 0 and it's going keep on going sine wave it's like a normal waveform 0 i but i1 starts after pi after pi angle only the i1 starts there is a delay there is a delay of starting with the current i1 with i2 this pi so due to this delay it is called a lagging so this angle is subtracted because after pi only the i1 is starts so that is represented by this negative sign that is indicated as a lagging so this is the lagging angle between i1 and i2 i1 starts at 0 but i2 starts after some angle that is called pi so this is the lagging angle so due to the delay it is subtracted and termed as a lag so that also represented by the vector diagram so this is i2 normal 0 degree it starts at 0 degree but i1 starts later on so that it is in the downward if it is starts earlier it will go to the upward positive this will be negative so so this is the angle between the this pi is the angle between i1 and i2 because it starts later there is a delay that's why it is given in a downward direction if it is lead it will given in the upward direction so from the above waveform it is clear that i1 reaches its maximum value and zero value with a phase difference of pi after i2 reaching so the i1 will reach the maximum and zero value at a delay of pi so that i1 lagging the i2 so i2 reaches normally but i1 reaches after pi now we'll see the second type leading so the leading is nothing but leading alternating quantity is one which reaches its maximum value and zero value earlier before reaching the one quantity another quantity will earlier than the other alternating quantity the previous case it is later now it is earlier so that is called a leading so it is represented by the equation i2 equal to i m to sin omega t so it starts at zero there is no delay but i1 equal to i m1 sin omega t plus pi right so it will start earlier plus pi if it is minus pi means uh, later but it is plus pi so it starts earlier so this plus indicate this waveform starts earlier than this second waveform this plus indicates that it is a leading so that is represented in the waveform see this this i2 starts as a normal it starts at zero but i1 start earlier before angle of pi the i i1 starts before starting i2 i1 starts earlier with an angle of pi so that is indicate this is the leading i1 is leading with the current i2 with an angle of pi in previous case lagging i1 starts later here i1 starts early so due to this earlier this see the phasor diagram this is i2 this starts at zero but i1 starts with an angle of pi it is leading so that it is given in in the upward direction anti-clockwise direction upward direction lagging mean will go to downward direction so this is pi is the angle between i1 and i2 i1 is leading with pi with an with the with the current of i2 so that is given in a statement from above waveform it is clear that i1 starts already and reaches maximum value before i2 so the i1 is starts earlier that is i1 is leading the i2 i1 leads the i2 so that is the given by the angle plus pi so from these two we can able to note down that two vectors are said to be quadrature quadrature means exactly 90 degree there is a 90 degree phase difference between the two vectors if it is quadrature two vectors are said, said to be anti-phase means 180 degree in phase means 0 degree so anti-phase means 180 degree so in phase means 0 anti-phase means 180 degree quadrature means 90 degree so in this video we discuss about the phasor diagram of a sinusoidal waveform two types in phase out of phase in that again lead lag thank you